Hey guys, good afternoon and welcome to this live session on quantitative aptitude brought to you by Talent Sprint. As you all must be aware, the agenda for today's session is to understand why do students score less in the quantitative aptitude section of competitive exams, right? Be it a bank exam or uh, you know IT jobs uh, entrance test, which is an aptitude, or for that matter, any other exam which has quantitative aptitude as a section in it. All right. Well, I see a uh, few of you have already joined. I can see Saloni and Praveen on chat now. So welcome, guys. Thank you for participating in this session. And before I begin discussing anything, I would like to mention that you need to interact with me through this chat, right? You can see that there's a chat box available beside the video screen. So please use that effectively and ensure that this is a uh, proper and fruitful discussion, right? Don't treat it like a classroom where you know the teacher has to speak and you just have to sit and listen. All right. This is not on the subject as such. We are not going to discuss about any concept or any topic of quantitative aptitude. What we are going to discuss today is on how do we boost our score in this section of your competitive exams, especially the IT jobs aptitude test. So this can be really fruitful only if we interact with each other, right? So don't let it be a one-way traffic, right? It's like two -way interaction. So you can use that chat box to interact with me. Any questions, any doubts, any queries at any point of time, just pose the question there and I would love to uh, help you out with that. All right. So I hope all of you are preparing uh, well and your preparation is in high gear for your IT jobs aptitude test, right? You know that to get your dream IT job, the very first hurdle that you'll have to cross is to clear that aptitude exam. I'm sure many of you are very strong in the technical subject right but still uh, we cannot even uh, showcase our uh, caliber we cannot even showcase your caliber of uh, you know your technical knowledge just because you are not able to clear the aptitude test so it becomes really very important for all of you to ensure that you clear this first time so that you can you know uh, present your uh, ability of doing you know good programming or good coding etc and then there are other students who really uh, crack this aptitude test very easily. But you know, many of them are not so strong in technical uh, subject, right? So you, I'm sure sometimes you wonder that, you know, though that person is not as strong as I am in technical uh, subject here, he has got a chance to appear in the interview, right? And I'm, see, I'm, I'm left behind. Why is that? Because I could not clear the aptitude test, which he could clear very easily. And amongst those who have cleared the aptitude test, again, if you see, well, all of us can actually score in quantitative aptitude, not a big deal. But if you really understand, it's not just about clearing the cutoff of this section to appear for the interview, right? Or, or to go for the next round. Quantitative aptitude is one section where you can actually boost your scores, right? This can be your score booster and your, uh, you know, overall score in the exam can actually shoot up if you perform with the right strategy. And before that, if you prepare the right strategy for this particular section of your exam. So it will be great if you actually tell me, why do you think students fail in this section? Fail, uh, there by fail, I don't literally mean fail, but why do they fail to score more, right? We clear the cutoff, but why can't we score 80, 90% or, you know, you know more than 90% in, in this section? Is it really very difficult? Do you think quantitative aptitude is really very difficult? Just try and think about this. It's, it's not, right? Is quantitative aptitude very difficult? No, like, like for example, uh, you know, let's just understand this case. You appear for a entrance test for an IT job, right? It is an aptitude test. There are 50 questions on quantitative aptitude. And again, there are other sections there. We are focusing only on quant. So there are 50 questions in quantitative aptitude and you have been given 30 minutes to answer these 50 questions. Now, how many marks do you think you'll be able to score? 30 minutes, 50 questions from quantitative aptitude you have to score as much as possible. Now, on an average, if you see, students will be able to score about 30, 35 marks, right? I mean, and then cutoff anyway would be much lesser than that, but you can score about 30, 35 marks in, a, in 30 minutes of time, which actually is a good score, right? But do all of us score 30, 35? No. Average would be around 20 marks, right? But then there are students who can score 30, 35 also. This is in 30 minutes, 30 minutes and 50 questions are presented to you. Now try and understand, the same 50 questions when given to you without a time restriction. In case one, we had a time restriction of 30 minutes. 
Now I'm saying there's no time limit. 50 questions from quantitative aptitude, take as much time as you want, or maybe take two hours for that matter, right? Let's assume that you have two hours to attempt 50 questions. How many marks do you think you'll score? I'm sure most of you would say that we can score 50 on 50. Yes or no? Or if a little more time is given, maybe you'll score 50 on 50. Now, now this is not by some malpractice of cheating. You can actually score or answer all the 50 questions that when enough time is given to you, right? When enough time is given to you. Now, what do you understand from these two cases? When 30 minutes was given, we were able to score 30, let's say, or 25, 30 marks. But when a lot more time is given, when your time is doubled or quadrupled, right? One hour or two hours, you are scoring set percentage, 50 on 50. What do you understand? I'm sure the first reaction would be time management is very crit uh, critical, right? All of you would say we have to manage the time very well so that we can answer more and more questions, which is true. Time management is important. But a very important learning by observing these two use cases is that we actually know how to answer all the 50 questions. Yes or no? The fact that you have got 50 out of 50 or 45 plus, let's say, the fact that you've got 45 plus or 50 when two hours were given to you shows that you know how to answer the question. But when limited time, 30 minutes is given, you are not able to answer all the questions. So the point that I'm trying to make is someone who has got 30 out of 50, or let's say somebody who has scored 27 marks out of 50 marks. What do you understand by his score? He's got 27 correct. But does it mean that he cannot solve the remaining 23 questions? No. This guy was able to solve all 50 when more time was given. So what does it mean? He could have solved the other 23 questions also, provided there was some more time. Are you able to follow? So the point here is, again, I'm repeating myself. The point is, we know how to answer all the questions, right? Somebody who has got only 27 out of 50 does not mean that he cannot solve the remaining 23 questions. He can solve those 23 questions as well, but the time was not sufficient. Or if a person has got 35 out of 50, it doesn't mean that he cannot solve the remaining 50 questions at all. He can solve those 50 questions also, but time was not sufficient. Or, or if you say, you know, we have scored 20 out of 50, fine, 20 out of 50 is good. But does it mean you can score only 20, you know how to answer only these 20 questions and you have no idea about the remaining 30 questions? No, that's not the case. You can also solve those 30 questions if a little more time is given to you. Now that's the challenge. This is what we need to work on. See, when I usually ask in my classes that how do you improve your score in quantitative aptitude, the, the most common response I get is I should learn all the shortcut formula. You know, we should know the shortcut formula, we should know the tips and I mean, we should know the smart methods of answering the question. We should know the various techniques that can be helpful in, you know, eliminating the options or finding out the correct answer directly. Yes or no? So, so what I realize is we actually run after shortcut formula. We feel that if I know more and more shortcut formula, I'll be able to solve more and more questions, which is actually not the case. It is not the shortcut formula that alone will help you. Are you able to follow? I'm not saying that shortcut is not needed. Shortcuts are helpful, but depending only on the shortcut is a wrong strategy. And this is where most of us fail. We fail to realize that there is something more important that is needed for you to improve your score. Let us take a third case to understand this, right? We have already discussed about two cases. Case number one, where 30 minutes were given, 25 questions on an average were answered by students. When two hours was given, most of the questions are answered, right? Close to 50 questions are answered. These are the two different cases. So our understanding from these two use cases is that we know how to answer all the questions, but time is not sufficient. So what do we do to manage the time? That's the question, right? That's what we are going to discuss today. What do we, what do, we do to manage this time? so that we can boost our score. Why do students fail to manage their time? Right? Why do students fail to get a good score in quant? It's because they fail to manage their time. So try and take the third case now. In this third case, the same 50 questions are given to you with a time limit of 30 minutes. But this time, you are allowed to use calculators. That feels good, right? I'm sure all of you are feeling relaxed. Huh? Calculator, if it is there, I can score more. No? In case number one, you could score about 25 marks average out of 50 in 30 minutes. Case three, 50 questions, 30 minutes and a calculator. Will you score the same 25 marks? No, you'll score more. But how? The time was same. The time was not increased. The given time was only 30 minutes. Then how is that we could score more? Because this time we were given a tool which helped us do a very important part of simplification in a jiffy. 
You get me? This tool really helps us do the calculations very fast, or you know, we don't have to do any calculation. Just punch the numbers, and you know, the answer is in front of you, right, on that small screen there, and you can take that answer. Are you good to follow? So if you if you look at third case here, what did you see? There is a shortcut formula that you have learned, and you thought this would help. Yes. So there is a shortcut formula. You have put that shortcut formula on the paper. And now you'll substitute the values. In case number one, you were doing that calculation on paper. In case three, you have done the same calculation without paper because calculator was allowed. And that saves a lot of time. And because you have saved a lot of time by not doing those calculations, you will be able, you will be able to attempt more number of questions in that limited 30 minutes. Are you able to follow? See, I'm repeating the point again. We are getting less score in quantitative aptitude, not because we do not know the concepts. We are getting a lesser score because we are not able to attempt all the questions. We are not able to attempt, you know, more number of questions. And why are we not able to attempt more number of questions? Because we spend a lot of time in answering the first 10, 15, 20, 25 questions only. And why do we spend a lot of time in answering these uh, questions that we get correct? Because we are very poor in calculation. Are able to follow? So shortcuts are needed. Learn the shortcut formula, but just do not depend on that. I mean, simply don't depend on shortcut formula. That I can, I know all the 23 shortcut formula of uh, time and uh, distance topic. I know all the 14 shortcut formula of simple and compound interest. So I'll be able to answer any question asked on this topic. No, that's the wrong strategy. There's something else that you need to work on, and that is your calculation ability. If you ask me. The one reason why most of the students fail to get a good score in aptitude exams, in aptitude tests, is because they are poor in their calculations. I'm talking about quantitative aptitude here. All right. That is one major reason that we are left behind in this section. Again, by left behind, I don't mean that we are not clearing the section. We are clearing the cutoff. But like I said, this is one section where you can boost your score, right? Getting 45 out of 50 or 50 out of 50 is not a big deal. Provided more time is given to you, but time will not be increased. Time will remain the same. What you have to do is improve yourself. And don't learn shortcut formula to improve yourself. Practice on your calculations. Understand, you know, look at look at the stages of solving a question, right? When you when you are attempting a test, what do you go through? There is a quantitative aptitude paper. You first read the question. Most of the times you'll understand the first, uh, you'll understand the question the first reading itself. But maybe sometimes you have to read it the second time for getting a clarity on what has actually been asked. So you read the question, then you try to understand the question, and then you try to recall all the formula that you have, this, you have learned, right? Which is the formula that suits here, right? Which is the apt formula, or what is the method that I should, that I should apply? Then after that, you choose those numbers. See, it is quantitative aptitude, right? The part, the point here is every question will have some numbers in it, and you'll have to play with those numbers. That is where we are actually facing a lot of uh, difficulty, right? So you put the formula on paper, and now you're substituting the values. And then you do the calculation, and you simplify, mark the answer, and go to the next one. So in all these stages, if you see reading the question, understanding the question, thinking about the formula, you know, substituting the values, doing the calculation and simplification, and then marking the answer, the one stage where we end up wasting a lot of time is this calculation part. Why? We never thought that calculation is important. We only had we, we only worried about the formula in our preparation. Are you able to follow? So start working on your calculations. Believe me, all of us are very bad in calculations. We're not just bad, we are very, very bad in calculations. And the problem is not that we are bad in calculation. The problem is we don't realize that we are bad in calculation. Are able to follow? I'm not saying that you're doing it intentionally, but we don't even realize that we need to work on our calculation. If I ask you, do you know multiplication? All of you will say, yes, I know how to multiply. Do you know how to add? Yes, I know how to add numbers. Do you know how to divide numbers? Yes, I know how to divide numbers. Do you know how to subtract two numbers? Yes, I know how to do the subtraction. And how do you do that? On paper. That's the problem. Are you getting my point? So the one thing which you really need to focus on and you know put efforts on a daily basis so that you can give a top-notch performance and quantitative aptitude section of your exam is to work on your calculations. Are you able to follow? Are you able to follow? Right. So that is what you need to just concentrate and focus on. And that is what is the agenda. I think if you ask me, so what is the technique that we should uh, follow to improve our score, to boost our score? You have to start working more and more on your calculations. That is it. But let us discuss a few concepts to understand how it really helps. Right. I, I would like to start with a simple four-digit addition. Right. Let's say 
you have to add the question says what is you know 5693 plus uh, 8714 equals to what i am just taking one example to help you understand this right 5693 plus 8714 equals to what different options are given to you you have to mark the correct answer well you may not expect such questions in your aptitude test but just as an example or or let us assume that while solving a question from one of the arithmetic aptitude topics you have to do this kind of a calculation in one of the steps so what do you do what do we do we know the two numbers we have to add them look at look at what most of the students do and this is what is wrong right we say 5 6 9 3 8 7 1 so 3 plus 4 7 9 1 10 1 and 1 carry then 6 and 7 13 and 1 is 14 and then 6 and 8 is 14 so 14407 is the answer i repeat the question 14407 is answer correct the answer is correct but the method is wrong now you might be wondering why is the method wrong we have been doing this from our second class third class onwards how do you say that this method is wrong method is also correct the regular way of adding two numbers there right? that's how you do conventionally but do you have so much of time in the exam no if you really look at it by the time you write the number 5693 on paper you have spent 2 seconds if not less you have spent 2 seconds you get me again you spend another 2 seconds in writing the numbers 8714 Which is a waste of time. Did you start your calculation? No. You are only copying the question, which took about four five seconds, and then you will put a plus sign. Why? You are adding these two numbers. See, these are all habit. This has become a habit, right? We have been doing this since our childhood, right? So it has now become a habit. You put this plus sign. Is it really needed there? No. It's free. is it like in the middle of the calculation you forget what you are doing? So you look at this sign. Oh, addition. Okay, and then you continue. No, it's not that. You know that you have to add these two numbers. Really? Why is it plus sign needed? Now, some of you may argue, how much time does it take, boss? It doesn't even take half a second. Yes, it doesn't take more than half a second. But how many such half a second you spend in the exam putting all those plus signs? If you do thirty calculations, thirty calculations means thirty plus signs. Let's assume, which means fifteen seconds is spent in only doing this, putting all these signs, which is not a waste of time. It is. It is a waste of time. You get me? Not needed at all. Now this 15 seconds could be equal to one mark. You can solve one more question in that 15 seconds. So that is what you need to work on, right? Just don't run after the shortcut formula. It's helpful, but just do not depend completely on that, right? Start improving your calculation ability. Now some of you may say that no, no, I did not put a plus sign, so I am good. I am smart. Yes, good. You have not put the plus sign, which is very good. But then these are the things that we do, right? We draw a line. What is the significance of this line? Tell me, is there a significance of this line? Is it important? Presentation, yes or no? You just doing the presentation. That okay? I put the two numbers first. Then I'm drawing a line to separate the question from the solution. Yes or no? And now you start adding them: three plus four, seven, nine plus one, zero, and then one carry. You forget this. One carry. You have to write that, right? All all this has become a habit. Then seven and seven, fourteen. So four here, and again one carry, and six and eight, fourteen here. Fourteen thousand four hundred seven. Is it over? It's not over yet. We'll draw one more line. Why? Over. The question is complete. The solution is complete. So we'll draw one more line. But that's waste of time. That is waste of time, right? Do we need to do this? No. Do we need to do this? No. Do we need to put this thing. No. You're wasting your precious time in doing all this nonsense in the exam and and all this stuff there. In fact, nothing is needed. The same calculation can be done without putting pen on paper. Ne jeffy. Is it no? The problem here is we try to put pen on paper for every simple calculation out of habit. Out of habit. And that is what you need to work on. Habits die very hard, right? Habits die very hard, especially bad habits. And this is a very bad habit. Doing calculations on paper is a very, very bad habit. Can we not do the same calculation without paper? Yes, of course we can. You'll have to practice a little. This is not difficult. It's not complex at all. But even if it is a complex one, all you need to do is just practice a little more. Five thousand six ninety three plus eight seven one four. There are different ways of doing it. If at all you want to add on paper also, do not write the number. See, the biggest challenge here is like a You know that Kirana shop fellow, right? We write all the numbers there in that long list, and then we add. Not needed. What you can do is add digit by digit. What do we do in the first step? We'll add the unit spaces. So add the unit spaces. Add the unit spaces. Three plus four, seven. Then second, nine plus one, ten. So zero in the answer. You know that one gets carried forward. Then one and six is seven. Seven and seven, fourteen. Hundred spaces, right? So four in the answer, and one gets carried forward. And now add the thousand spaces. One and five is six. Six and eight is fourteen. And that's your answer. Fourteen thousand four hundred seven. 
again with explanation takes so much time if i don't explain you and do it directly i'll i'll save half of the time that i've spent here you're getting me so what is what is the point here you have wasted a lot of time in just doing all these unnecessary steps you see very neat we haven't done anything and we haven't put anything on paper except the answer but that's very simple right maybe some of you also feel that why are you discussing all this but believe me this is what will help you score more marks in this now not putting pen on paper will not help you score more not putting pen on paper will help you save time and that time that you save can be spent on uh, attempting more number of questions see i'll i'll repeat again the problem is not that i don't know how to answer those 50 questions all those 50 questions the problem is i don't have enough time so you are trying to understand how can we extract more time from the same 30 minutes so that we can maximize our score and this is what you have to focus on and and this is not something that you can directly apply in the exam this needs a lot of practice believe me if you think okay fantastic you have given a good idea now i'll apply it's not that easy it's not that easy it will be right habit style way and this is a very bad habit we tend to put pen on paper right we have been doing that for years now right for for tens and twelves of years so far right since third fourth class onwards if you have been doing it it is more than 10 years that you have practiced on paper and in a span of one month if you have to take an exam right after one month you will not be it will not be so easy for you to do it right so you have to practice how do you practice just think of two numbers try to add them mentally there's there's one more way of doing it if you if you don't want to do this digit by digit addition don't do it try to do it mentally how do you do it mentally see what did we do here in this case we at first added the unit spaces why that's what we do in the actual calculation then we add the tens space that's what we do in the actual conventional method then we add hundred space thousand space ten thousand space lakh space ten lakh space and so on that's what we need to do but if at all you don't want to proceed from right to left you can also proceed from left to right nothing wrong with that but there you you can do it mentally again you don't have to write anything on paper what do we do five thousands and eight thousands how many thousands five thousands how many thousands eight thousands thirteen thousand remember this for a second right thirteen thousand Then add the hundred, six hundred and seven hundred, thirteen hundred. You already had thirteen thousand, and now thirteen hundred. So it becomes fourteen thousand three hundred. You yes know. So what are we doing? We'll do the calculation in four steps. Instead of adding the numbers directly, we are adding the thousands, then adding the hundreds, then adding the tens, and then the ones, and then merging all this. Right. So do the calculation in four steps, and then merge all the values. You get the answer. So thirteen thousand and thirteen hundred. Right. You can club directly. If if you don't want to, you know. Find out all the values before you add. You can keep adding at every step. So thirteen thousand, thirteen hundred gives you fourteen thousand three hundred. Now look at the tens. Ninety and ten hundred. Fourteen thousand three hundred plus hundred. Fourteen thousand four hundred. Three and four is seven. Fourteen thousand four hundred and seven. Fourteen thousand four hundred seven. Then why don't we put pen and paper? As simple as that. And this is one example. Except there are, I mean, all the calculations that we do on paper are like that. See again, I don't mean to say that. Every calculation that you do must be done without paper. No, that's not the objective. I'm not saying that do everything without paper. Like for example, let's say if the same question is asked, something like four thousand six fifty three multiplied by nine seven six eight. Now that multiplication is complex. Doing it mentally or doing it without paper would be challenging, right? Would be a little troublesome. So we we'll do it on paper, not a problem. I remember for for four thousand six fifty three into nine seven six eight, if you have to multiply, happily multiply it on paper. This is not the problem. The problem is when you multiply forty six and ninety seven on paper. This is the problem. We we'll do it. See, if I ask you what is two into three, all of you will say six. Seven into eight, whatever the answer is, right? Fifty six. Four into four, sixteen. Nine into two, eighteen. Six into three, eighteen. Right? Seven into nine, sixty three. Eight into four, thirty two. It's very simple. Right, sixteen into one, sixteen. Twenty into one, twenty. Twenty-three into one, twenty-three. Right, but if I say what is sixteen into twenty-three, you start doing it on paper. Sixteen into twenty-three, twenty-three, sixteen, six threes are eighteen, six twos twelve and one thirteen, and then three and two, so eight, six, three, three sixty-eight. Waste of time, nonsense. That's that is why we are not able to attempt more number of questions in the exam. We know how to solve all the questions. All of you have three did that, right? But we don't know how to do the calculations. You know, there's something called as, uh, you know, there's a saying, right? In penny wise and pound foolish, right? Something like that. 
we are trying to do a lot of we are putting a lot of efforts to learn all the formula and methods but what is the foundational element that is not being focused on right this is very very important if you say 23 to 16 is 368 okay took about 5 6 seconds but the same would have been done without paper right this calculation you have to do on paper okay but 23 into 16 not on paper what do you do 23 into 16 see the same concept what if you do in case of addition break it into parts it is not 8643 plus you know some 3000 something like that it is 8000 and 3600 and 800 10 and 90 4 and 3 that's what you do here also the number 23 has to be multiplied with 16 or if you look at it the other way the number 16 has to be multiplied with 23 yes or no 16 is a two digit number has to be multiplied with 23 what do we do what what happens what do you mean by a into b a into b means what there's a particular number a it has to be taken b times yes or no the product a b is what a is taken b times or b is taken a times this this is called the product a taken b times so a a a a a a, a how many times b times or b taken a times b b b b b b how many times a times that total will give you multiplication the product a so like for example if you say you know uh, 4 into 3 4 into 3 is 12 why 4 is taken 3 times 4 and 4 and 4 so 4 and 4 8 and 4 12 or 3 is taken 4 times 3 plus 3 6 plus 3 9 plus 3 12 right that's the product so that is applicable for any multiplication that you do like here also 4653 into 9768 means what 4653 should be taken 9768 times that makes life complex but here 16 should be taken 23 times 16 should be taken 23 times now do not try to take it 23 times 23 is not 20 23 is 20 and 3 20 plus 3 right split 23 is 20 plus 3 see it all depends on the way you look at the numbers calculations are not complex i mean there are a lot of students who fear numbers it's, it's like you know they say it's, it's actually like that you just spend a little more time with those numbers and you'll get the best way to uh, get cracked in it, right? 23 is not 23. 23 is 20 and 3. Split it. 20 plus 3. Now, 16, which is supposed to be taken 23 times, will be done in two steps. Now, we'll first take it 20 times, then we'll take it 3 times. 16 into 20, 320. Is it a lot of effort? No. 16 into 2 is 32. Into 20 will be 320. So, 320. 16 into 3, 48. Again, I'm sure. You are able to do this calculation. Right? 16 into 3, if you say, no, no, I can't do this also, means you have to practice a lot more. Right? You have to start from the basics. 16 into 3 is also simple. 16 is not 16, 10 and 6. So 10 into 3, 30. 6 into 3, 18. 30 and 18, 48. So 16 into 3 is 48. Back to this one, right? 16 should be taken 23 times. So when we take it 20 times, we get 320. Go and take it 3 more times. 16 into 3, 48. 320 and 48. 320 and 48 have to be added merge. You first split the number 23 as 20 plus 3. You have done the individual calculations, bring the values, and then merge. Right? So 320 plus 48. Is that not 368? Yes. Then why should we put pen on paper for such a simple calculation? Are you getting me? I think that's the idea. If if you have understood what I'm trying to say, the, the session is over. I mean, with this, the session is over. We have to seriously work hard. On the way we look at numbers and the way we do our calculations the challenge is not that we do not know the shortcut formula the challenge is not that the time given is limited the challenge is not that the questions are more and time is less the challenge is we are poor in calculation which we fail to realize the challenge is we think that shortcut formula will help us which is correct they'll help us but you only have the formula you don't know how to get the answer quickly you are getting me right just to just to make it a little more uh, evident let me give you another use case right i'm sure all of you will connect very easily with this you know how to calculate simple interest yes or no yes how do you calculate simple interest p into t into r by 100 si equals to ptr by 100 that's the formula it's like a shortcut formula i mean every question will not have a shortcut formula right you should know the best way to get the answer there so simple interest is equal to P into T into R by 100, PTR by 100 or P and R by 100, whichever way you look at it. So for you to calculate the simple interest, you should know the principal amount, the time period and the rate of interest. Substitute these three values in the formula there. Do that magical calculation and we get the answer. Now think about this. All of us go for an exam. 
for an aptitude test. And the question is on simple interest. It says the principal is 12,000. Time period is three years. The rate of interest is 12.5% per annum. What is the simple interest? So basically, principal is given to you. Time period is given to you. The rate of interest is also given to you. And he's saying, find out the simple interest. Calculate the simple interest. No, don't, don't calculate this. Yeah, I'm not asking you to calculate. My question to you is, will you be able to solve this question or not? Do you think you'll be able to solve this question? Say yes or no. Just think about it. Simple question. Find out the simple interest. What is the simple interest? P, T, R. All three are given to you. Right? All the three are given to you. Calculate SI. Can you get the answer? Yes. We can get the answer, right? No doubt about it. All of us can get the answer. Now comes the second question, which is a very important question, right? Try and understand this. Will and of course you've got the correct answer. I mean, get the answer by that. I mean, you'll get the correct answer, right? Now tell me, will all of us get the answer exactly at the same time, or the time taken by all of us is exactly the same? PTR were given to you. You know the formula is I equals to PTR by 100. You can solve the question. But will all of you solve the question in the same amount of time? Will all of you get the answer exactly at the same time? All of us started together. But will all of us get the answer exactly at the same time? I'm sure your answer is no. But think about it. Why does this happen? The same principal amount, same rate of interest, same time period, same formula, PTR by 100. And all of us are from the same planet. It's not that somebody has come from Jupiter, so he knows how to do calculation faster, and he'll do something great there. Or somebody has come from, you know, Venus there, and they know a different way of calculating the answer. All those are rubbish points, right? No. So why does it happen? Why do we spend different amount of time for answering the same question using the same formula when the values given are same? P same, T same, and R is same. It is because, simple, we are different when it comes to calculations. The way I do my calculation is different from the way you do the calculation, is different from the way somebody else does his calculation, is different from the way some other person does the calculation. Some of us will solve this question in 10 seconds, some take 20 seconds, some take 15 seconds, there are a few who will take up to 60 seconds, but then at the same time, there are a few who will get the answer in just 3-4 seconds. And all of, us, all of us have used the same concept. It's not that the concept has changed. Concept has remained the same. Formula is same. Values are same. That is what you need to work on. That is the reason we are we are lagging behind, right? If you really look at guys who score uh, very good in quant, how? Is it because they know more formula than you? No. Is it because they have practiced more than you? Definitely yes, they have practiced more than you. But is it because just because of more practice of questions? No. They are better. They are way ahead of you in terms of the way they look at the numbers. In terms of the way they do their calculations. So I think the story revolves around the same point, right? If you are strong in calculations, you get a good score. Your score will be good. If you are not so strong in calculations, your score will not be so good. As simple as that. If you, if you ask me, I'll put it in one equation. Your score in quantitative, quantitative aptitude is directly proportional to your calculation ability. Of course, there are other factors there. I'm not saying it is only calculation. Right? You can say that, okay, I'm very good in calculation, but I don't know any formula. I mean, even that's not fair, right? And in that case, also you lose marks. But then, given the other conditions as constant for all of us, your score in quantitative aptitude is proportional to the way you do your calculations. Yes or no? Honestly, tell me how many of you would have done 23 into 16 on paper in the exam? Raise your hands. Of course, I cannot see you, but you know what I mean. How many of you would have done 23 into 16 on paper in the exam? Honestly, most of you will say yes. I'm sure, I'm sure you're saying yes, or you're nodding your head. Avoid, avoid. The moment you put 10 on paper, you realize that you have wasted your time. Again, I'm not saying that you have to avoid it for every question. This will happily do on paper. But simple calculations, keep it simple. The idea is do not waste time in simple calculations. Like, like for example, 46 into 97. Is it complex? No. If you ask me, this only looks to be difficult, but actually very easy. It's not that the uh, higher the number, the complex the calculation, the more time it takes. It's not that. The best part is 97 is very close to 100. So what happens? 97 is not 97. 97 is 100 minus 3. Are you able to follow? 97 is not 97. 97 is 100 minus 3. 46 should be taken 97 times. So we will not take it 97 times. That makes it complex. 
we will take it 100 times and give it back three times. Take it 100 times and give it back three times. You're getting me? Balance it out. You have to balance it out. Oh, I've got extra, I'll keep it means you'll go wrong, right? It's not the real life uh, monetary transaction, right? Got something more and keep it. Uh, I mean, I don't mean that we do that, but you're getting me. So take it 100 times and give it back three times. You're done. 46 into 100. Is that any complex? No. Even a second class fellow will say, what is 16 minutes? 4,600. 4, 46 into 3, is that difficult? No, that's 138. 46 into 3, how do you do that? 46 is not 46. 46 is 40 and 6. So 40 into 3, 6 into 3. 40 into 3, 120. 6 into 3, 18. 120 and 18, 138. So 46, when we have taken 100 times, if you have to put on paper to explain this to you, right? You don't have to write any step on paper. I'm just writing it here so that you can follow. What did we do? 46 into 100 minus 3. So this becomes 46 into 100. This is what should happen in your brain mentally, right? You don't have to put it on paper. 4,600 minus 138. You have, you have understood this, right? Again, split it. 46 is not 46. 40 plus 6. So 40 into 3, 6 into 3. 120 plus 18, 138. That is it. 4,600 minus 138. How much? What, what will be the answer? Answer will be 4,462. Now maybe some of you will ask a question that how do we subtract? Even that is complex. You'll start doing this 4,600 minus 138. Okay, so you know, 5, this is 10. 0 minus 8 is not possible, right? So this is 9 and this is 10 minus 8, 2. 9 minus 3, 6. 5 minus 1, 4. And then 4, 4, 4, 6, 2. But we have already discussed about this. This is sheer waste of time. When you were in fourth class, you could have done this, no problem. But now, in a competitive exam, you cannot do this. Time is like gold. Time is like gold. You understand? If I have to give you an analogy, when you when you do this calculation on paper, it is like you know somebody is standing at a bus stop and distributing gold biscuits. Take it. I have a lot of time. That is what you are trying to uh, you know project when you do this. Fine. Maybe subtracting one thirty is difficult. So who is asking you to subtract one thirty? One thirty is not one thirty. One thirty is hundred and thirty and eight. See, whether it is subtraction or addition or multiplication or division or whatever is the calculation, split and merge. You first split and then you merge. You split and you merge. Break it and make it. You getting me? Don't subtract 138. First subtract 100. 4600 minus 100, 4500. Minus 30. 4500 minus 30, 4470. Minus 8, 4462. Okay, don't subtract 138, subtract 140. Subtracting 138 might be difficult, but subtracting 140 is easy. Subtract 140. 4600 minus 140 will be 4460. 600 minus 140 will be 460. Forget about 4000, that 4000 anyway will come here. Because here it is 0, 000, right? This is 0, 000. This is 4000. So anyway, 4000 will be there as it is. 600 minus 138. So don't subtract 138, subtract 140. 600 minus 140, 460. But you remember, you have subtracted two extra. You were supposed to subtract only 138, you have subtracted 140, which means two extra has been removed. You have to add it back. See, you have to balance it out, right? Add that back. How much will you add? Two. So 4,460 plus two, 4,462. That's your answer. It is, it is like this, no? See, if I say, how much is uh, 237 plus 99? Tell me. I know you'll not put pen, pen on paper for this. 237 plus 99. How will you do this? All of you know the answer is 336. All of you know that the answer is 336. Why? I'm sure all of you are adding 100. You're not adding 99, you're adding 100. Because you know that adding 100 is much, much, much easier than adding 99. Though 100 is bigger than 99, but that's the irony, right? Though 100 is more than 99, adding 100 is very easy. It doesn't take any time at all. Zero seconds, you know that 237 plus 100 is 337. See, speaking that out may take time, but here in 0 seconds, you know that 237 plus 100 is 337, right? For that thought to come out, it may take time. So don't speak. I'm speaking because I have to explain you. But when you're doing calculations in the exam during that test, don't speak out. Or even when you're practicing, don't speak out. Because speaking something takes time, right? You know, 237 plus 100 is 337. You're saying something. So although the answer is ready here, you cannot tell the answer unless you have finished your statement. You're kidding me? It's like it's like thought, right? It just happens. It doesn't take any time, right? 237 plus 100 is 337. 
It doesn't even take this much time. It's there, 337. What did you do? You have not added 99. I'm sure all of you, even without me explaining all this, when I, if, if I ask you 237 plus 99, all of you will say 336 is the answer. Because we don't add 99, we add 100. And then we subtract 1. This is basic. All of us know this. I'm not saying that I have explained this to you. No, all of us know this. The problem is we do it only for 99. Do it for 97 also. 237 plus 97. Add 100, 337, minus 3, 334. Or, or, or for that matter, let's say it is like 417 plus 92. Why do you add 92? Why do you add 92? Add 100. 417 plus 100. How much is that? 417 plus 100. 517 minus 8. 517 minus 8, 509. Or add 90 and then add 2. 417 plus 19, 507. 507 plus 2, 509. So basically, the point that I'm trying to make is split the number, split the number, slice it, and then merge. Any type of calculation, any type of calculation. There. You getting me? And and I'm just giving you some examples so that you start practicing it. See, when you practice yourself, you'll get a lot and lot of ideas yourself. Oh, this calculation can be done this way also, and then you start practicing on the same thing. So if I have to explain you the whole of speed maths, this is like speed maths, right? It's like Vedic mathematics speed math, right? If I have to explain you the whole of speed math, it will take 5-6 hours of time, right? See, we have a video on speed math. All of our talent spin students would know this, right? Those who have enrolled for our program, there's a video on speed math, the first video of quantitative aptitude. You know, why is that the first video of quantitative aptitude? Because I'm very clear, unless you are good in calculation, there's no point in going to the topics, other topics. What will you do by learning a shortcut formula of profit and loss? What will you do by learning a shortcut formula in perfect? Unless you apply it effectively. Yes or no? If somebody is getting the answer in 12 seconds and you have taken 13 seconds to get the same answer, you are wrong. As simple as that. That is what you need, that is how you need to look at it. If he is able to get it in 12 seconds, I should take less than or equal to 12 seconds. You getting me? That's the idea. So this is like a running race, right? Competitive exams or these aptitude tests is like running race. The one who comes first is the winner. If the first person takes two hours, even then he's the winner. Yes or no? Have you, I mean, did you ever, it's like very simple, right? You look at a running race, running race. They don't say that finish the race in 10 seconds. They say finish the race. Who will finish the fastest? Of course, here we have a time limit of two hours, one hour, depending on the exam. But the point is, the competition is like a race. For you to be the winner, you have to beat others. They are not saying solve all the 50 questions in 30 minutes. They say solve as much as you can do in those 30 minutes. Are you getting me? So, you know, understand the core there, right? You have to beat others. And, and that should be, that is how you should look at it, right? Every person is a competitor, right? So, practice is the key. Now, now I have explained you by just one or two examples that calculations actually can be done really very quick without putting pen on paper, but this is not the end of it. Right? Like I said, actually, if I have to teach speed maths, a long video, like I was mentioning, right? talented students know that the speed maths video is for four hours and 20 minutes, where we have explained about 16 different techniques of doing different types of calculations, additions, subtractions, multiplications, divisions, squares, square roots, cube, cube roots, percentage based calculations, fractional calculations, and all that stuff. I cannot do that in that, you know, that in this limited time of 40, 45 minutes that I have, right? But you can go through it. The video is available. You can watch it anytime you want, any number of times you want, till you perfect yourself with those techniques, right? Provided you enroll for the program. So learn all those techniques. Try to learn all those techniques. Whether you learn it through this video or elsewhere, that doesn't matter. But learn those techniques and start applying these techniques. Very, very useful. And I'll give you one more example, right? Before we close the session, let me give you one more example. This is like very, very basic, but see how much of an impact it will have on you. Very simple. The question is, do you know how to multiply with 5? All of you will say, what? Multiplication 5 is like k4. I've done it, what? Some 3743 times so far in my life. Fine. Multiplication 5 is very, very easy. But are you doing it the right way? This is the question. Let me ask you a few questions for this, right? 2 into 5, 10. 3 into 5, 15. 4 into 5, 20. 5 into 5, 25. All of you are getting the answer, right? You, you know the answer. 6 into 5, 30. 8 into 5, 40. 9 into 5, 45. 12 into 5, 60. 14 into 5, 70. 
right? 18 into 5, 90, right? 3 into 5, 15, 2 into 5, 10, 1 into 5, 5, 64 into 5. How many of you do this on paper? Honestly, you don't have to comment that in the chat, but think yourself. 72 into 5, 66 into 5, 89 into 5, 144 into 5, 136 into 5, 236 into 5, 448 into 5, 64 into 5, 36 into 5, 28 into 5. All these numbers that I've thrown on you are as simple as 2 into 5, 3 into 5, 4 into 5. But we do it on paper. Most of us do it on paper. Maybe some of you are aware of the technique. Very good. I hope you apply that in the exam. But others who are not aware, understand. If you are thinking all these days, that you know how to multiply number by 5, you are wrong. You don't know how to multiply number by 5. Huh, what you know is this. 64 into 5, 5 4 is 20, 5 6 is 30 into 32, 320. Yes. But I have explained you earlier. Answer is correct. Method is wrong and you are wrong. Your answer is right, but you are wrong. You are getting me? What do we do? See, the point is this. You have to multiply number n with 5. You have to multiply some number n with 5. Most of us do this. Start multiplying with 5. But if you look at it differently, I am saying 5 is not 5. 5 can be taken as 10 by 2. 5, you can take it as 10 by 2. 5 is not 5. 5 is like 10 by 2. 10 by 2, right? 10 by 2 is 5. Let us, you know, reposition it a little, right? n by 2 into 10. Anything wrong with this? No. So n into 5 is like... This goes five n by two to ten. So the point is, instead of multiplying a number with five, you take half of that number and multiply the result with ten. Instead of multiplying the number with five, take half of the number, multiply the result with ten. Instead of multiplying a number with five, take half of the number, multiply the result with ten. This will give you the answer much much faster when compared to this conventional method that we have been following since childhood. Take some examples. Four into five, twenty. Now you are saying 20 because you know the answer already. Do it this way. What is n? n is equal to 4. He is asking us to multiply 4 with 5. What is the technique that we have discussed? Take half of the number. Take half of the number and multiply the result with 10. Half of the number, multiply the result with 10. So 4 is a number. Half of 4 is 2. 2 into 10, 20. Half doesn't take much time. Right? Taking half of a number is like half a second. Half a second job. Right? Half into 10. Into 10 is not a you know, calculation at all. It's, it's like a no-brainer, right? You know how to multiply a number with 10. Now do this. 6 into 5. 30. All of you know it. But do it this way. Half of 6 is 3. So 30. 8 into 5. Half of 8 is 4. So 40. 10 into 5. Half of 5 is half of 10 is 5. So 50. Right? 7 into 5. What is half of 7? 3.5. Into 10, 35. 5 into 5. Half of 5 is 2.5. 2.5 into 10, 20. You getting me? 12 into 5. Half of 12, 6. 60. 14 into 5. 70. 16 into 5. 8. 80. You getting me? 8. Half is 8. So 80. 18 into 5. Half is 9. So 90. Right? 17 into 5. Half of 17 is 8.5. Into 10 is 85. Are, are you able to connect with this? Are you all able to follow this? Yes, I'm sure. You're getting the point, right? You're getting the rhythm, right? Take half the number, multiply with 10. Whatever be the number, take half of it, multiply with 10. Now increase the number. What all we have done so far is all those calculations which we already knew, right? We knew that 4 into 5 is 20. What's new about it, right? But 24 into 5, 12, so 120. 26 into 5, 13, so 130. You understand what I'm saying? Half, so 13, so 130. 28 into 5, half, 14, so 140. 32 into 5, half is 16, so 160. 64 into 5, half of 64 is 32, so 64 into 5, half is 32, 320 is the answer. Why do I have to write the number on paper, then put this into sign, then draw a line, then multiply digit by digit with 5 and draw one more line and say 320 is the answer? Half into 10. 72 into 5, half of 72 is 36 into 10, 360. 84 into 5, 42, so 420. 88 into 5, 88 into 5, 440. All of you have got the answer, right? Half of 18 is 44 into 10, 440. Honestly, tell me how many of you would have done 88 into 5 on paper in the exam? Yes or no? That's it. That is what you need to understand. So, see, I'm not bragging about what I've explained here, right? It's like very simple. Many of us know this, but not all of us. And this, this will create that 2 second, 3 second gap in the exam, right? The one who multiplies 64 into 5 on paper, 
takes about four five seconds to get the answer three twenty, including all the time he spent in writing the numbers and all that drama he has done there. And the one who knows this technique three twenty. That's the difference. Three twenty, three twenty. That's the difference. You getting me? And that difference is enough for one to you know get ahead of you. It's like running race, I told you, right? One split of a second, you slow down, somebody else will take over. Right? So you have to be you have to be at your best throughout the game, right? Throughout this match. That's what you do. 144 into 5, half of 144 is 72, so 720. 236 into 5, half of 236 is 118. Half of 236 is 118. 118, 118. So 1180 is the answer. 98 into 5. Half is 49, so into 10, 490 is the answer. You getting me? 23 into 5, half of 23 is 11.5, right? 11.5. 115 is your answer. You getting me? 115 is your answer. So the, the point is, we know how to, we, we already knew how to multiply a number with 5. But how many of us were doing it this way? What I've explained here, how many of us were doing? This conventional method that is what you need to just check check yourself and change yourself right i mean change the way you're looking at the number it's all about how you look at the number there right for us five is not five for us five is ten by two and that's what creates the gap there right now now that you know this technique maybe some multiplications become easy like for example let's say i have to multiply 64 with 49 or why is it not? Let's say 64 to 49. Looks very complex, right? 64 to 49 is not easy. Most of us will do this. Or, or I will, will come back to this later. 64 to 49. I mean, we know how to do it in a regular way, right? 64 to 49. How will a smart person do? He will say 64 into 49. 49 is not 49. 49 is 50 minus 1. He will think about it, right? He will not write on paper. 64 into 50. Now, into 50 is as good as into 5. Once you know what is into 5, multiply with one more 10 to get into 50. 64 into 5, 320. 64 into 50, 3200. 3200 minus 64 into 1, 64. 3136 is your answer. Without having to put on paper. What I did there was to just present it to you, right? Into 49, into 50, minus 1. 50 times will give you 3200. Minus 1 time, minus 64. 3200 minus 64, 3136. That's your answer. Or let's say it is uh, 72 into uh, into into let's say 48 or, or 47. Simple. Into the moment you see somewhere some number around 50, you should know that it is 50 plus or 50 minus something. 50 minus 3, 72 into 50, 3600. 72 into 3, 216. That's your answer. 3384. If you are under an impression that I had already memorized this and I'm throwing throwing it here, no. I was doing the calculation on the spot. And you don't have to write this also. You can say 72 to 47 is okay, 3384. I, I, I was able to do it here on the spot. And if I can do this, I'm sure all of you can do that. Because I didn't come from Jupiter. Right? I also belong to the same planet. Probably the only difference between you guys and me today is the amount of practice that I've gone through. I, I will not know a single shortcut formula which you guys are not aware of. Everybody is smart, these right? I and mean, all of us know all the shortcuts from me. But that is a different smartness. I'm mean, like getting to know all the formula. What really matters is are you doing this or not? And unless you start doing it, I think it will be difficult for you. Okay. This is just again a snapshot of what we can do using numbers, right? There's a lot more. Remember, four hour 20 minutes of video, speed maths. Okay. So I think uh, I'd like to stop here. There are many other things I wish I could explain all the techniques uh, to you here, but I'll have to close it. Uh, this time limitation, but don't worry. Like I mentioned earlier, you can learn all these techniques, not just from speed maths, any topic of quantitative aptitude, not just quantitative aptitude, any topic of your aptitude test, speed, quantitative ability or reasoning ability or verbal ability, or, or for that matter, you know, uh, you know, let's say you're going for an aptitude test of IT job, right? So you may have questions on computer programming. You may have questions on, uh, you know, there may be a personality inventory test there, right? All these videos are available in our online program. So you can just exploit that and get ready for your dream IT career.
right? Uh, you can visit our website, talentsprint.com slash IT for more details, right? If you'd like to know the product details, just visit talentsprint.com, talentsprint.com slash IT to know about all our product details and get ready for your dream IT job. And before I close, I repeat the same. Practice is the key, right? The only shortcut that can help you crack these aptitude tests is to practice a little more, right? So keep practicing till we meet again for uh, similar such live sessions every Saturday at 2 p.m. All right, we'll, we'll meet again on the next Saturday at 2 p.m. The details would be shared uh, on our Facebook page and the YouTube channel about the session there. You can join us with all of your friends free without paying anything and get ready for your IT job. All right. So keep practicing and take very good care of yourselves. See you in the next session. Bye. I'm Akshita Bashapur from Belgaum. I'm Nitika. I'm from Andhra Pradesh. I'm Aravinda. I'm coming from Salem. My name is Smita. I'm from Bangalore. My name is Saurabh Singh. I'm from Delhi. My name is Sukriti. I completed my engineering from Mobile, Madhya Pradesh. I'm Megha Vikuma from Bangalore. Sonam Singh from Hyderabad. I'm from Tunal Reddy. And I'm from Aroras Engineering College. Welcome to Talent Sprint. I'm Sylvia and I'm here to share your daily dose on job skills. In this video, we will learn how to speak in a jam session. Now, Just a Minute is a great tool to help improve your managing, convincing and your overall general speaking skills. So by the end of this video, you would have learned how jam can actually aid in improving three skills for you. One, your ability to organize your thought flow. Two, your ability to apply logic you know, and sound convincing. Three, your general speaking skills. Now most